Hey guys, so we're back with our next video tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to actually log the bot in to the Discord server. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to start. I'm on Windows. If you're on Mac and Linux, you open up the terminal. But on Windows, I'm going to open up my command prompt. Okay. But I'm actually going to use the terminal, which is pretty much just the PowerShell. But uh, this is, I think, still in beta. So they haven't actually released the full version. But again, you can just use the command prompt. Okay, and what we're going to do is right now, the command prompt is pretty much an application that allows you to interact with your operating system. Uh, it's very handy when it comes to, uh, if, you know, if you're a programmer, you want to make sure you know how to use the command line. Um, but pretty much right now, I am currently in my C slash users slash Anson file folder. Sorry, if I do PWD, it's going to show you my path. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to my documents folder. So I'm going to say CD documents, which stands for change directory. So I can just do I can just type docu and then tab and I'll pretty much complete everything. But I can just type documents like that. Okay, and what I'm going to do is now that I'm in my documents folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a directory. I'm going to call mcdir. So this stands for make directory. Okay, and use this command to pretty much create directories, aka folders. Okay, so we're gonna say v12 discord js bot. Okay, so I'm gonna create that, and you're gonna see that we just created our directory. Okay, again, if you're on Mac Linux, the, the mcdir command is the same thing uh, on Mac. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cd into that directory. Okay, so I'm, I just typed v12 hyphen and then tab. And that's the reason why it has those uh those backslashes okay but you can just type out the entire thing so now i'm in this directory and if i type dir or if i type ls that'll pretty much ls stands for list segments on the command line right if you're using windows and if you're on if you're on cmd and if you type if i go to v12 discord okay if i type ls well, actually, I guess it's oh, surprising that still works. Okay, but, um, huh, okay. I didn't expect that to work on the uh, command prompt. But anyways, if ls doesn't work on command prompt, then dir is what you want to use. But if you're on Mac, ls is the way to go. Okay, okay so ls pretty much will list all of the, uh, it lists all the files inside your current directory. Okay, so right now, we don't have any files in our directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up Visual Studio Code inside this directory okay so notice how so what we've done so far was we open up our terminal we started from the c slash user slash anson path and i navigated to documents i created a directory called v12 discord js bot and i navigated to there and i'm going to open up visual studio code by typing the code command so when you install visual studio code uh, and when you open it for the first time, it'll ask you, do you want to install the code command to your path? And I'll show you how to manually do that in case if it doesn't. Okay, so if it says something like uh, code command not found, all you got to do is just type in, just go to your start and just manually open the Visual Studio code and you should be fine. And it'll open up a window just like this. Okay, nothing, nothing too crazy. Okay, and then you can just, you know, if you've used Microsoft Word or any other application that allows you to open up files, you just click on file and then you click on open folder and you click the folder that you want to open up. In this case, this is much more convenient because I can just open up my directory without having to go to file, open folder and whatnot. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and type in control P, control T, whoops, control K, control T. No, wait. Control Shift P, I'm sorry. Control Shift P will open up the uh, command thing. Uh, and pretty much you just type code and scroll down. Hold on. Path. What was it? I'm trying to find where it was. Well, that's weird, but it should pop something up. Like when you install Visual Studio Code for the first time, it should automatically set the path. If it doesn't, uh, what you can do is you can click on environment variables and you click on you can click on path. It should say it somewhere. I'm just not sure because it did it automatically for me before. But let me actually find it real quick just so I can show you guys uh, where was Visual Studio Code installed. There we go. 
So if I go to this folder over here, this is where Visual Studio Code is installed. Basically, it's just going to run this command and it'll open up Visual Studio Code for you. Okay, so if it doesn't, then just manually go to your environment variables, just paste the location, the bin folder on where Microsoft Visual Studio Code is installed and the command should work just fine. Okay, and if you have any issues, just join my Discord server and I'll help you out. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so right now we are in our v12 discord js bot uh, directory and i'm going to zoom out just a little bit okay nice thing is is if you don't want to use the windows terminal or your uh, mac or your linux default terminal you can just click on terminal over here and you can click new terminal and this will open up a terminal in the current directory so it's going to open see how it opens it up in users slash anson slash documents v12 discord js bot right over here if I type ls, it's going to show nothing because we haven't created anything yet. Okay, so Visual Studio Code is very easy to use. If you've never used it before, I'm going to try my best to guide you through it. But for now, don't worry so much about all the stuff on the sidebar, okay? Um, don't worry so much about that, okay? For now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. And to do that, we're going to go over to the left-hand side, the Explorer, okay? You, by, you can open up the Explorer by clicking this little... Uh, file icon thing whatever it's called or you can do Control shift e and that will open up the explorer okay and you're going to see this is the current workspace or the folder that you have opened up you're going to click on you're going to right click and you're going to do new file or you can just click on this plus sign over here okay or Control shift c and what you're going to do is you're going to type in a name for your bot so you can type it what you can name it whatever you want but i'm going to name it bot.js okay so i've officially created my first uh javascript file and this is where all of our source code is going to go so now if i type ls it's going to say bot.js there's nothing in it okay but we're going to fix that in just a second okay so you can see that i can actually just run the code by typing node bot.js so you want to use the node command to execute your javascript code okay so if i do that nothing's going to happen because we don't have anything yet so if i do console.log and if i say hello world i save all right node bot.js hello world very very simple okay again if you know javascript if you've used nodejs before this should be a piece of cake okay cool so before we even get started on anything else we need to actually do one thing we need to install discord js onto our system okay because in order to actually run discord bot we need to interact with the discord api and to do that, we're going to use the Discord JS module to do so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type into my terminal, or I can type in here. Well, actually, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to type in npm init hyphen y. And what this will do is it'll initiate our directory as a Node.js project. Okay, so you're going to see that it's going to create a package.json file. Okay. And all it did, the dash y flag, all it did was a skip through the questions. Okay, if you if you actually type in npm init, it's going to ask you a series of questions. Okay, and obviously you can go through this depend the way depending on the answers that you provide for those prompts. That's what's going to change it here. But you can always just manually change it if you want. So for example, I can change the name of this to whatever I want. I can just change it to my Discord JS bot v12. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Change the version, the description, the main scripts, all this kind of stuff. But again, as a beginner, don't worry so much about what this package.json file is. Okay, but it is very important that you have it. Okay, because basically, let's say if we want to deploy our application to Heroku or EC2 on Amazon Web Services, right? Those instances are going to look at this package.json file and it's going to look for the dependency, it's going to look for the scripts. And if it doesn't see any of these uh, valid information, it's going to not be able to run the application. Okay, but I will walk through it, so don't worry so much about it. So now that we have package.json file, what we're then going to do next is we're going to install discord.js. So to do that, we can do npm i discord.js. Okay, so that's going to install version 12.0.2. Okay, now I haven't really explained what NPM is. So let me go ahead and do that. So NPM basically stands for Node Package Manager. 
Now, you'll notice if you've worked with different uh, environments for like different languages, every language is going to have its own package manager. And these package managers allow you to install third party uh, packages like code that was written by another individual or group of developers. OK, in this case, we're installing a library that a bunch of developers built and we can use their code to build our application. That's all what this library is. OK, so pretty much NPM will allow you to install packages from NPM JS. So if you want, you can go to NPM JS dot com sorry not dot org dot com and you can actually search for a bunch of different packages too so let's say for example if i wanted a dictionary api or a dictionary library i can just type in dictionary and um or maybe not that maybe uh urban and you can see that there's a, there's a module that allows us to interact with the urban dictionary api so if i wanted to you know get a random word that was defined in the urban dictionary i can do so very easily Okay, and if you type in discord.js, it's going to pop up over here. Basically, it's going to install any, any package that's on the NPM registry. Okay, very, very simple. Cool. So now we actually have discord.js installed locally inside this folder. You'll notice that a couple things happen. First thing, it created this uh, package lock.json file. Don't worry so much about that. Another thing is that inside our package.json file, it added this dependencies property, okay, which maps to a JavaScript object, okay, or JSON object. And you're going to see that this dependencies object it has another property inside it called discord.js, which maps to the version 12.0.2, okay? So that's very important again when you're deploying to a cloud or if you're just, you know, uh, if you want to put, if you want someone else to clone your repository, they can just easily type npm install and it will install all of the dependencies for them. Or again, we're not going to go super crazy into this. Okay. And you also notice that we have a node underscore modules folder. And this pretty much is where all of our third party packages are going to be installed. Okay. So even though we just installed Discord JS, it installed other dependencies that it needed to. Okay. But this is pretty much the source code that we need. Okay. All of our packages are going to go inside node modules. Okay. Cool. So. Um, the next, so now that we actually have Discord JS installed, we've done everything that we need to do. We can actually finally go ahead and write some simple code to log our bot in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say const. Okay, so pretty much we're declaring a variable called Discord, and I'm going to basically say const Discord equals require Discord.js. Okay, so what we're doing here is we are requiring the Discord JS module that we installed just now. Okay, and we are loading that module, we're requiring it, and we're storing it inside this Discord variable. So the entire library, all of the classes are going to be inside this variable over here. So if I want to reference uh, whatever class I want. I can do so by saying discord dot, I can say discord dot API message or activity, whatever I need, I can reference it through here. OK, but what we're going to do is we're going to what we need to do is we need to instantiate a discord client. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say const. We're going to call it client. You can call this whatever you want. You can call it bot. You can call it client. You can call it discord client, whatever you want. OK, but I'm just going to keep it simple and call it client. And I'm going to say equals new discord. So I'm referencing this constant variable over here. And I'm going to reference the client class, OK, and parentheses. So what I'm doing here is I am instantiating the client class that is part of the Discord module. And if you go to the documentation, you're going to see my click on client over here. It's going to say client is a class and it's pretty much the main hub for interacting with the Discord API. So we need to make sure we have this client class, OK? And we can also do a bunch of other things, too. OK, but we're not going to worry so much about that for now. OK, so cool. this is just a bait. This is just the basis. OK, so now we have declared our const discord variable. We required the discord just library. We instantiated the client class. Now we can actually log our bot in by calling the dot login method, which is part of the client class. OK, and if you want to if you want more information about it, all you got to do is just go to documentation. You can see 
that if we go to client and we click on login, it logs the client in establishing a WebSocket connection to Discord. So this is what we need in order to actually log our bot in. Okay, so client.login. And now here comes here comes the part where we need to incorporate our token. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going I'm gonna go over to my Discord app.com and I'm gonna go ahead and click copy. Okay, now again remember if your bot gets compromised, if your token gets compromised, just click on regenerate, it will regenerate a new one for you. Okay, so we're gonna just click on copy. And what I'm gonna do is for now. I'm just going to paste my token in just to show you guys how it works or that it works. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just paste that in there. And I'm going to type node bot.js and you're going to see now there's this thing is currently buffering, right? There's nothing being there's nothing happening right now, but it's pretty much stuck there, which is good. Okay, because if we go over to our, our Discord app, you're going to see our bot is online, but it doesn't do anything. Okay, so in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to actually do stuff with your bot. Um, and I'm also going to show you guys how to uh, keep your bot, how to properly secure your bot token. Okay, so I will see you guys in my next video. Peace.